Hi, I'm Laverne Cox, and you're watching Out at the Center. Let's Tony Award winner Elaine Stritch and legendary columnist Liz Smith sat down together at the center for an intimate conversation. Liz asked Elaine about her early years in New York, her show on Broadway, and her previous visits to the center when she didn't have an audience. This is Liz and Elaine walking down Fifth Avenue in 1956. And they were gorgeous then, and they're gorgeous now. Please welcome Elaine Stritch and Liz Smith. Today, we are fortunate to be speaking with one of the greatest performers in America, and I think probably of the world. In Japan, Elaine Stritch would have already been voted a national treasure. And here she has already been voted one of the 100 greatest performers of all time. I come on. I came on. You know what Liz said to me? She said, now, Elaine, I have an introduction about you, and I don't want you to say one word <laughs> until I fold up the paper and put it away. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, Elaine? So I did. Didn't I do good? What happens when a nice Catholic girl leaves Birmingham, Michigan, comes to New York, tells her family she's going to live with the nuns at the Sacred Heart someplace, and then she ends up rolling around on the floor with Marlon Brando. How did that happen? Well, you got some of the story right, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> the first part is all true, and you know, what happens to a girl when she leaves Birmingham? She's lucky. Um, <laughs> She's got that for openers. And um, uh, if I was rolling around on the floor with Marlon Brando, it must have been a part in a play, believe me. Because I didn't... Elaine. I'm, I'm serious. You know, it's very interesting that we've been friends all, all, for so many years because we certainly... I'll put, we went to different schools together. That's what we did. Elaine, you said in the dressing room you had been here in this building mm -hmm. a number of times. And I know that's not because you're gay, transsexual, transgender. Oh, I think there's a little of all of those things. <laughs> <and> all. <laughs> no, you, you told me you were here for AA meetings. Oh, yeah. Uh, this that, is her excuse. That's hoping I could become gay or trans. <laughs> Your show, which you didn't like, me to ever refer to as a one-woman show. You thought that was stupid. Your wonderful show uh, that you won the Tony for. Uh, did, did, was that the high point of your career for you? No. Because you, you no, I mean, just kept milking it forever. <laughs> <I did. laughs> I think there is something interesting about the way I'm going to answer that, Liz. Okay. Uh, no, seriously, I, I really kind of mean this from the bottom of my heart. I have a problem uh, with talent. I think talent is one of the scariest things in the whole world uh, for many, many, many reasons. But the reason that I, I say that it's not the high point of my life I got out there alone, finally, and all through my career, I was like Cassie in, um, in um, Chorus Line. In Chorus Line. Her problem was everybody looked at Cassie, and that can be a problem. And when you're good, it takes awful good actors to work with you and like you and ask you to dinner. I finally found out what it was like to work with Elaine Stritch, I'll tell you that. <laughs> But what, what I'm trying to say, and I'm doing it pretty awkwardly, I really am, but I'm trying to say that I was finally free. I didn't have to worry about being good, because I was all alone out there. 
I'm going to do something for you tonight because, first of all, it's because I really am, and I can't think of a better place to admit this, in love with Liz Smith. Okay? <laughs> I have heard women in their 60s saying, I'm still here. And on several occasions, I've heard and, and seen women in their 50s saying, I'm still here. More than a few times, I've heard and seen women in their 40s saying, I'm still here. Where have they been? <laughs> I had no intentions of ever going near that song until I was the right age to sing it. And let me tell you something, I'm serious about this. Um, for, to stand up here on a stage and say to an audience, I'm still here, I think you should be at least 80 or 81 or 82 or 83. <laughs> I really do. times I've seen them all and my dear I'm still here how is the gay Riviera under the sun now da da dee da 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 how is the temple serene by a green Arabian sea or maybe you'd rather be going gaga in gay Perry <laughs> ours the silent Sierras or a sun-spotted Devonshire long dotted with flowers. Mind the inspiration, yours the inclination. Why don't we take a vacation and, and make, make it, it all, all ours? <laughs> there's good news and there's bad news, and there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is, I have got a terrific acceptance speech for a Tony. The bad news is, I've had it for 45 years. The good news is, I finally won a Tony. The bad news is, they cut the speech. Let's go! And that's all for this excerpt from Out at the Center. If you want to see the full show, check it out on our website at gaycenter.org slash out. I'm Laverne Cox. Until next time, stay in the love. I had a wicked childhood. Perhaps I had a miserable youth. But somewhere in my wicked, miserable past, there must have been a moment of truth. For here you are, there you are, loving me, whether or not you should. Somewhere in my youth or childhood I must have done something <laughs> Nothing comes from nothing Nothing ever could So somewhere in my youth must have done something good. <laughs> good night. Thank you all. I got it, Wayne. I got it.